Okay, we're now in chapter two, part two, series two, whatever you want to call it, of this strange thing that we're doing. Hopefully it's not that strange. It's very strange to me, but I also am just afraid of the world and everything seems weird and uncomfortable. But you, this should make you comfortable, it should make you interested, and if not, please, there's a stop button, there's an outside world, there's trees, sunshine, snow, children playing, there's so many things that you could do. But we're here, we're going to keep going. Okay, so a force <laughs> is a vector that causes an object with mass to accelerate. I prepared for this video by writing this up here. A force is a vector that causes an object with mass to accelerate. What do we mean by that? This is an object with mass. It, it is experiencing forces right now. There's perhaps some wind on it. There is uh, gravity pulling it down. There's uh, air resistance. All of these things, uh, these are the things we want to model. And our goal here is, uh, sorry for the little Clementine diversion, but the goal here is to be able to write a processing sketch where a singular object on the screen experiences multiple forces at the same time. Those forces could turn off, turn, turn on, turn off, scale up, scale down. This is where we're going to get a dynamic simulation on recording. Excellent. Okay, but let's see if we're ready to do this. The good news about this definition is it proves that we are. We, we are very comfortable. We know what a vector is. A vector is, a quanta, is, a, is an entity with magnitude and direction. Check. We know what acceleration is. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. And for us, it's the change in velocity per frame, per frame of animation. So we're pretty good here. We know that we can define a vector, p vector force equals new p vector, and we can apply that vector to acceleration, velocity dot add acceleration. We're kind of done. We did this already. So this isn't, the nice thing is this isn't new. There is a new part to this, which is a force is a vector that causes an object with mass to accelerate. And you know, just to demonstrate for a second, not to, not to belabor the Clementine, but I do like Clementines, this is an object with mass. Come on, run, processing sketch, run. <laughs> the timing is off. I had the perfect timing. Let me just try that again instead of editing myself. This is an object with mass. This is a bunch of pixels on the screen, like colored gray. There's no mass there, but we could invent mass. So in inventing mass, or sort of like a proxy for mass in our code, is something that we're going to have to look at. Not have to, but it's going to be a useful thing for us to look at to make our simulation perhaps more realistic, dynamic, to feel more, I don't know, just nice, to make it nice. That's our, that's, we should also be so happy as to have a simulation with math. Okay, so, but back over here. Um, so, this is where we're going, and we did this already. So, in essence, in many ways, this video, it's the sad truth, is, is us just reorganizing our code to kind of separate out this part where the forces come into an object um, from that update method. But before we do any of that, I think it is a useful, it's, it's, it's useful, I just forgot to start the timer, so I have no idea how long I've been going, but it's a useful few minutes for us to just walk through Newton's laws of motion together. This is the stuff of high school physics classrooms. I'm sure that I will botch the explanation, but I will give you my best interpretation of those laws. Many of you will, are hopefully experts in this stuff and will email me uh, um, that I got it wrong and I'll fix it later or something. Um, but um, I, one of the things we want to do here as an, as an exercise is say, we want our simulations to obey Newton's laws of motion. You probably ultimately want to break those laws of motion in many ways, because you might be hoping to do something creative that's different to invent your own physics in a way. But at least as a starting point, we want to look at what is, what is, what's, the real, what's happening in the real world? Can we make sure our code um, matches that in some way? And, and uh, keep going from there. So let's actually look. I, I, I did prepare a little bit more for this video in that um, rather than have to write this out, uh, let's see if I can do this. OK, here is Newton's first law. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion. OK, well, really, that's, it's a little bit misleading to state that. Here's the thing. Before Newton came along, people thought that uh, if you wanted something to keep going, you had to keep applying a force to it. So if I toss this in the air, <laughs> throw this across the room and try not to, I'm going to throw this across the room. Ready? There's a soft little sweater over there. So, okay, it landed on the sweater. It stopped moving, right? To get it to keep moving, I have to keep applying a force to it, right? So um, I just feel the need to move over here. So now I can see that the clementine's okay. No clementines were hurt in the shooting of this video. I really should redo this one. We're going to keep going. 
The point is that an, object the uh, an object's velocity never changes. Un it's the opposite of, 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 of this thing that people thought. I have to keep pushing it. The reason something slows down to a stop is because there's friction and air resistance and all these forces pushing in the opposite direction of velocity, causing things in the real world to ultimately stop moving if you roll it along the ground. But in a vacuum, in the absence of forces, or if the net force is zero, an object's velocity stays constant. It keeps moving in the same direction with the same speed, or it stays at rest. Its velocity is zero, and we could demonstrate that by this, right? This object, the net force, there's gravity, but my thumb is somehow giving a force in the opposite direction. The, the net force on this object is zero, so it stays at rest. So one of the things, this, the reason why I lost my pen, and not that I need it, but it's like a comfort device. It's like my, it's my comfort device that I need to device, I don't know, comfort object that I need to hold to feel safe. But um, um, so the point is that um, the point is there is a point. The point is that we want this idea of a net force is really important. We want to be able to accumulate our forces in such a way that if we add up all the forces together, if the net force is zero, the object's velocity is constant. So we want to make sure our simulation obeys that rule. That's Newton's law number one. Now, Newton's law number three, I'm going to do number out of order, number three, here's a diagram showing you net force, is uh, Newton's law is, is often stated this way. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. But this is a bit misleading. It sounds like, you know, hey, if I, like, punch you, then your opposite reaction is equal and you punch me back. No, this is not really how things work. Um, and I think uh, a better way of stating this, if I could get back here, is the following. Forces always occur in pairs. The two forces are of equal strength but in opposite directions. And a great demonstration, if you'll just bear with me, uh, if I can get my clementines again, is gravitational attraction. So gravitational attraction occurs the force occurs in pairs. Now, we think of gravity as this thing that makes stuff fall, right? That the Earth is sucking everything down into it, and everything rests on the ground, and that's why we're, we have muscles to keep us standing upright, and all sorts of stuff. The truth of the matter is, just as, we, just as the Earth exerts a gravitational force on us, we exert a gravitational force on the Earth. Just the Earth is so much bigger that it kind of overwhelms, the magnitude of that force overwhelms our little tiny, tiny force. But the force occurs in pairs. Now, this, this, is, this brings up an interesting question for our simulation. Every time we create a force, do we need to create another force? Do we have to implement this pairs thing? The answer to that question, strangely, is no. Newton's third law is something that we're going to not worry about too much. I mean, after all, are we, when we have an ellipse moving around the, 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 the window, are we simulating the force that it applies to all the air particles around it, and all the air particles apply a for, force back, and the gravity of the this and the that, and all this stuff? No, we're just kind of saying, like, yeah, it's a vector. Put it in acceleration. That kind of looks right. So we're doing a kind of loosey-goosey simulation in a lot of these basic examples that we're going to see in a moment. The thing is, there are times where you really do want these pairs. If you are doing a celestial body simulation with kind of gravitational attraction and everything's attracted to everything, this is where you want to say, for every object, apply that force in pairs. Both of these are attracted to each other, and then if I, could, if I had three hands, or actually I can juggle, but I don't have a third clementine. I guess maybe I, I could do it with, uh, no, no, no. Uh, in another video, juggling video? No, you don't want to see that. So um, this is, Newton's third law is an important law for us to be aware of, but for the most part, it's a, it's a point of realization where we're not actually simulating with incredible precision, um, the, 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 the force of every body acting on every body. In, in fact, there's no, I mean, a circle moving around the screen, is it scraping against the back of the screen? Is it, like, what, what's even going on there? So we have to realize that there's this sort of pretend thing that we're creating. I should re-record this video, because if I did this again, I would cut out all this extra nonsense. But um, um, time is of the essence. We're going to keep going. Um, the good thing is you can always fast forward or stop or quit or download, delete, whatever. OK, so. Newton's second law. Newton's second law essentially restates this definition, and this is the law that is the most important to us. This is the law that is going to instigate us to write a new function in our processing sketch. Right? So let's look at this law. Force, and technically speaking, this should really say net force, but let's just be simpler about it for right now. Force equals mass times acceleration. Awesome. Force equals mass times acceleration. We know. Right? We wrote this update function. 
in our processing sketch. That update function had location.add velocity. It had velocity.add location. And we asked this question. In every sketch that we write, ah, velocity.add acceleration. In every sketch that we write, what is our algorithm for acceleration? That is the moment where we put our creativity, our control, our algorithm, our math, our idea into our sketch. This is the standard motion algorithm. This is where we're putting our stamp on it. Now we're saying, let's use this formula. Well, force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration equals force, I can do this, divided by mass. Right? Divide both sides of the equation by mass. We have four, acceleration equals force divided by mass. The interesting thing about this is I have an idea. One of the things I would like to do someday is live in a world where the mass of everything is equal to one. And if you ever wanted that, you can too by programming your own world, right? So if you program your own world, you can just say the mass of everything in that world is one. And if mass equals one, what are we saying here? Acceleration equals force. Look how simple Newton's law is. Force is a vector that causes an object with mass to accelerate. Acceleration equals force. Acceleration equals force. So this is the essence of what we're about to do. Acceleration equals force. It's funny, like when we answer a question by asking another question. We said, OK, you know what? Everything is always about what is your algorithm for acceleration. And now we just said, no, 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 no. Acceleration equals force. And now we have the question, what is your algorithm for force? And this is the question we're going to answer in, all, in the next series of future videos. We're going to look at, I don't know, let's just make up forces. We're going to make up forces with some numbers and apply them to objects. Then we're going to look at, ah, I found this physics textbook and has a formula in it. Could we apply that formula in our code to simulate fluid resistance or friction or drag or gravitational attraction, um, tension? There are any number of forces you can think of. You can find a formula for them, rewrite that formula in code, and apply it to your object. So this is where we're going. Now that we've answered, we've we sort of answered the question of how we're going to apply Newton's law, and, and we will get to mass. We will put mass back into this um, equation here, but we're going to wait for that for a moment, um, uh, and we'll get to that eventually. So I think actually this is a good place to stop this video. What I like about this is I feel like this video is kind of just rambling explanation of Newton's laws, <laughs> so anybody should feel free to skip it and go on to the next one where we're really going to dive into the code. Okay, um, thank you. I don't know if I should thank you, but I really feel the need to, um, and uh, see you later.